What's going on, y'all? Corpus Christi Originals back at it again, coming to you live from the Produce uh, Sound Studios downtown Corpus Christi, Texas. And we got, you know who it is, the Riding Hype Podcast with us. What's going on, fellas? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? All right, so introduce introduce yourselves. We got Droopy M. What's it good? It's the boy Droopy M, man. We here. DJ Lil King. That boy Freak, man. Yeah, what's going on, y'all? Appreciate y'all for joining the podcast, man. Uh, so, uh, so how'd y'all feel when I invited y'all on the show? Excited. Actually, I was talking with you, King, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, man, honest opinion, I kind of figured you wanted us on there to talk about the other stuff you know what i'm saying yeah, it's all good though <laughs> but like i said i ain't i ain't really worried about all that stuff no more it's in the past for me i don't really dwell on stuff too much like i'm i'm the type like i i, I, I could have dj for fucking 50 cent yesterday and today is a new day i just it's, it's in the past already like that's how i am shit yeah it seemed like you got to a point where like you know what just screw this i'm gonna say something about this yeah because obviously yeah. it's around right yeah 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 man that's what's up, but yeah. And you mentioned too, like not not giving them some more uh, some more sh- some more light, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. So you guys you guys had had the podcast going for a while, and every time I always get notifications, bro, like uh, on for Twitch and for YouTube. And every time I, I not every time, most times I click on it and check it out for a little bit. But yeah, man, I really like what you're doing over there at the Brad Knight Podcast. I want to call it a network, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate, yeah, you. appreciate basically, you. Basically, that's man. what we're trying to build. Oh, basically, like a network shit. Yeah. Is that the was? Sir. What are you gonna say? No, I said seven days a week. Damn seven days there. a week. Man. Hell yeah. Yeah, getting it going. So that that was that the initial intent when you first started it? No, nah, the actual initial intent is man. Yeah. I'm actually, as they would say, I'm barely starting to get back to the roots of what the actual podcast was supposed to be, and that was interviewing like the. OGs, the pioneers, like the legends of this Corpus Christi, like music scene, rap scene, and even just like like bar owners and promoters. I ain't really got no no promoters on there yet. We didn't have people from the radio. We didn't have some. I don't know how those kind of promoter. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can kind of have on there. Yeah, well, like we've already had like different artists from the '80s, and '90s, the 2000s. So we just trying to uh, we trying to put the puzzle together. It's, it ain't no books out there. It ain't no video on the history of mm-hmm. corpus rap or nothing like that. So I'm just trying to at this point trying to do what I can to try to piece it all together so there can be some type of ma- not to say manual but some type mm-hmm. of, form some type of, of blueprint, something, like a blueprint of of what it was. You Documentation. Know what I'm Documentation. Yeah. yeah, that's the correct word. Uh, hey, on some real shit, man. We're building the corpus bible, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying on some real shit I mean, yeah, yeah. really you can piece together like especially these last few weeks that we've done um, and put together a big chunk of like at least the 90s alone mm-hmm. like that's and that's for people who care to know mm-hmm. you know what I mean like we just want to make sure it's there for you to know yeah. so yeah, yeah but the original intent was just I didn't have like a when I first started it wasn't like let's start with seven shows it was just basically yeah. i just started with the one show and then the news came second and after the news i can't i think i can't remember what came second with third it may have been the sports and then the sports then i think uh droopy and then we did scoob and then actually and this is a story i want to tell too the rotten hot concert series let's get into the origins of the rotten hot concert series because somebody just the other day told me that i need to tell this story mm-hmm. because it's like a a good story actually Kai Servin and the NBH homies, they had came on the podcast and we had did a Let's Chop Up. I forgot we got Let's Chop It Up too. They had came on and did a Let's Chop It Up. We did like a 30, 45 minute episode of them where they were just talking about the origins of their rap career and basically how they had felt that they had been blackballed amongst like the corpus music scene. No venues would be letting them perform wow, or nothing crazy. like that. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all have been reaching out to different people trying to get on shows and stuff like yeah, that. People okay. have been shutting y'all down. So they basically told us that. So we created the Riding High Concert Series. Actually, it was just supposed to be a one-off. It was just, we created the Riding High Concert Series for NBA. And it was basically just supposed to be one show and that was it. And then we did the one show and it just basically like, we got a good good feedback on that one. And the next week we, I don't, I don't even think we lied. Somebody said somebody, I can't remember somebody in the crew who it was, but somebody said, man, I want to do one of these too. And I was like, already. Yeah, and we just uh, been keeping it going from there, shit. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, I think man. that was me, bro. <laughs> I, was say, I, think <laughs> I can't remember who, I think it probably was you, shit, for sure. Yeah, shout out to Bino in the comments, man. Hey, dude, I'm so sorry, man. We're, we're going to get you on, man. Appreciate you for being there. Uh, 
for uh, uh, being patient with me, being more patient with us. Hey, who better to fill in for you, though, Bino? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know we shit. got you, dog. You guys definitely ain't a filler, man. Bino, we will be every day, oh, okay, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's my boy, man. I love Bino. Right on, man. right on. Yeah, straight up. It's awesome how you how you come upon that idea for the concert series uh, just from that. You know what I mean? And then you're just like, okay, let's continue doing this. That's amazing to me. It's like kind of like a, you st- like in business, like you stumble upon things without yeah. even intentionally you know thinking about doing it i call it throwing a whole bunch of stuff on the wall and just seeing what sticks yeah that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome has it always been like that for you it's been sticking yeah for shows for, <laughs> Not, for, like like even before sticking. the podcast yeah, yeah, you know what i'm saying like as a person yeah, yeah no, for sure, for as sure. a person always, yeah for sure for sure yeah, so and then uh, so you started DJing like in the '90s, right, or something I like that. Started DJing in the year 2000, maybe 1999, but like yeah, probably like 1999, 2000, somewhere within that frame. And I, and I found it interesting that you said not to be a DJ like at a club, but you yeah. wanted to make mixes. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, for sure. And, and not only mixes, but uh, screwed and chop mixes. Yeah, exactly. Which so is... basically, for me and my friends to listen to, it wasn't even nothing like let's make these a sell. This was just so me and my friends could ride around and listen to while we cruised around the city smoking and stuff like that and so and so you still were you selling your stuff at your at the plug and in the trade center yeah yeah okay we used to uh man we would like press up cd i would be it's crazy because uh at this point i was like pressing up the cds myself when i say pressing up myself like i still press them up i guess there's that's two different ways of people think when i say pressing up cds myself like one way is i could send it off to a company mm-hmm. and they press everything up and to people to other people, that's still me pressing it up. Okay. But whenever I say me pressing it up, that's me sitting at home, yeah. burning the CD, putting the label on the CD, mm. putting all the covers in the CD yeah, in yeah. the CD things, putting the CD in there, closing it, and putting a shrink wrap on there. And whenever <laughs> we had the, the plug days, man, I would be doing that. We would open on Friday, Friday like at noon. Man, I'll be up Thursday night to like five, six o'clock in the morning on uh, Friday just to make sure because i would post like on facebook and like do like the sponsorships and new release coming this friday and then everybody would be expecting it so i would be <laughs> sitting there man dying just making sure i had enough copies to sell the next day whenever we opened yeah. up <laughs> hell crazy, yeah bro. man and i found out you worked at key yeah yeah that's crazy hell, bro. i yeah. never would have thought that yeah hell yeah that was like one of them like had to do what I had to do type shit. You oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? That was right, right after like the plug had kind of like folded. And mm. that's whenever I had to do what I had to do to oh, go you, take so care of my family. So you did that after the plug? Yeah, that was after okay. the plug. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, then yeah. so so uh, while you were doing that, you were trying to save up some money or whatever to get your podcast started. Is no, that, actually, right? it, it wasn't even a podcast. Whenever I was at Keywood, I was trying to save up money so I could... Uh, I, whenever I left the plug, I had a, whenever I had the plug, I had a business partner. So my whole thing was now that I got the game to do it, I'm going to do it by myself next time. Mm. So my whole thing was to work at Keywood and save up money to open another storefront. Oh, OK. But I, I worked at Keywood. I saved up enough money and I probably could have opened the storefront. But at that point, at that point in time, I ain't going to lie, I wasn't really too confident in myself. Man, I remember paying the. Uh, Shout out to Rick, uh, Elevated Screen Printer. He pressed up my first ever batch of Rod and Hot shirts, wow, man. Awesome. I remember I think I paid him like five, six hundred dollars to press up some t-shirts. And man, I remember like that night I paid him, I'm sitting there thinking, like, damn, bro, like, did I just throw away money? Are people even gonna buy uh, this? Like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Gosh. Like, they know me for the plug. Nobody knows me for Rod and Hot. Like, damn shit. Like, am I making a mistake? You know what I'm saying? And man, I got that first batch of shirts, and man, that, that very first day, I wanna say that first batch I got was probably like a 50 batch or a hundred. I can't remember what it was, but Man, that very first day, I probably sold like 30 shirts. Wow. And it was people hitting me up that I didn't even know that was messaging me on on Facebook and Instagram. Man, can you come drop off two shirts to me? Can you come drop off three shirts to me? And I was like, man, hella people that I didn't even know. And I was like, man, that that told me that I was doing something right, man. I was heading in the right direction. And I never got to the point where I opened up another storefront, but the Rod and High Brands was there and it's still there to this day. So why why a podcast? Like, I mean, because you obviously had the store... But why a podcast? Well, was that becoming popular in your eyes, or I mean, why that avenue? Because uh, that's years later, though. Yeah, that was like let me see, man. The uh, the 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 podcast actually started. I was uh, I want to say this was in, and I hadn't even started a podcast yet in 2019. Me and my homeboy Adrian, shout out SUC Holden, we had went to Houston to do a, a, a slow and chop mixtape with uh, one of DJ Screw's friends, Lil wow. Randy, who DJ who DJ still to this day. And whenever we were there, whenever we were on the way on, over there before we left, like 
Adrian wanted to interview Randy and ask Randy like some questions. And I was like, well, shit, let's just film that shit. So whenever we got there, we did the mixtape. And after we did the mixtape, we actually interviewed him. I had like some questions like on my phone and we actually interviewed him. And that interview was just straight raw. Like there wasn't no microphones or nothing. Wow. It was just us sitting the mic on a tripod. It was like a Vlad style interview. He was on one side of the camera, we were on the other side, yeah. and we were both going back and forth asking him questions and just straight raw audio. <laughs> so that was probably like, that wasn't even a raw and how, but that was probably like my first time ever like interviewing somebody. Yeah. So that basically started. What year was that? That was in 2019. Nah, you got that timeline mixed up then. What well, I'm talking about like as far as like a, uh, like on my own. Still riding high. What? Still riding high in Black Believers Presents. With the cave, yeah, man, I forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't. I can, I can still uh, sit right next to him. He can still forget about it. That <laughs> that, that wasn't. I guess I don't really look it at that as a count. as a riding hot podcast. It you is. know what I'm saying? That was more of like the riding hot clothing brand, and that was like an entity of that True the clothing that. brand. I give you that. You know what I'm saying? That. Like I, I, I give you that. So, and even it was though definitely riding hot though. Yeah, yeah, definitely like riding, the high. riding high umbrella. Yeah, that shit. But like, I guess back then I didn't even look at riding high as like having an umbrella. It was just <laughs> we do clothes and hey, we are using riding high as part of uh, the cave to do interviews. Mm -hmm. So yeah, going back to I guess that was 2016. Whenever we were doing like the cave episodes awesome. and stuff like that, we were interview like a lot of local people and stuff like that. But as far as like the Rod and High podcast, I want to say the first interview I did too, official under the Rod and High podcast, I interviewed my my dog Ken too. He's not here today. He's the host of the Rod and High Sports. I interviewed him, and that was back in 2019 also, because he was there whenever we did that interview with uh, Little Randy. So whenever he ended up coming to Corpus, I was like, "Hey, we interviewed Randy. That shit wasn't really too hard. Shit, like, <laughs> let me interview you." Type nice. shit. He was like, "Already." So he sat down in another raw interview. It was just straight raw. And then I interviewed Meta. Y'all know Meta? Uh, he's he's down with the produce crew. I don't know if he still is, but he's 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 just we used to all hang around here back in the day. And yeah. he's DJs at Flanagan's. Shout out to Meta. 2019, I interviewed him, and it was just another raw interview. And I just I had those interviews, but I just didn't feel comfortable enough to like put them out. So I just basically like sat on them. Oh wow! Yeah, was it the audio quality quality or it, no, it was good, but it's just like. It, I was I was confused on how I wanted to do interviews. Like, if mm. one day I would want to sit in front of the camera with, next to the person. The next day I would think, man, I just want to sit behind the scenes. Okay. So I didn't really know in mind exactly what I wanted to do. Wow. So whenever after just sitting down and watching a whole bunch of different podcasts on YouTube, I just kind of threw them all together and came up with my own version. Nice. And I, like, I wanted to do like the Vlad style, like behind the camera. But I was like, no, nah, I, I want to be in front of the camera. Like, I don't want to do it behind the camera. I want to mm. be in front of the camera. Nice. Yeah. That's what's up, man. What's so? What's the story behind the name Riding High? Man, I came up with the Riding High name. Uh, I think I just explained this a couple of days ago too. To at the on the How About G show, I came up with the Riding High name, and when I, I was working at Kiwit, actually the Riding High it was to me it, it meant something that was like universal. Like you could be riding down Ocean Drive smoking and you riding high. You could be <laughs> riding in a big truck that's lifted and you're literally riding high, or you could just like I say. Get, it would be Friday, you just got paid, and sh you could be riding in a shitty-ass car, but you still riding high because you're mm. feeling good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, so to me, it meant... Your best shit, right? Yeah, <laughs> to me, I, I picked that name because it meant to me it meant what you wanted to mean. Mm. So that's why I picked that name. That's cool. Yeah. So you, do you think that's a, that's important for your audience, like to have their own perspective? Yeah, All so right. it means exactly what you want it to mean. If you want riding high to mean that you riding down... Uh, down the street, riding yeah. through your neighborhood, and y'all hella high as fuck, then y'all riding high, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. Whatever you want it to mean. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And man, you have multiple shows. Uh, so how do you think the relaxed, uh, high energy, for how do you think the format helps or uh, resonates with your audience? Because you guys are smoking all the time. I've been to your your, yeah. your spot, and y'all got y'all's your own little thing going on. Yeah. So how do you think that resonates with your audience? Well, it's, it's called a Rod and Hot Podcast exactly, for a reason. Right. <laughs> I, ain't gonna lie, I feel like they might be disappointed in us right now because we're not. <laughs> yeah, honestly, straight <laughs> up, straight oh, up. God. So if you say something right now, we can make our audience very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and us. Right. And you, yeah, if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And Everybody was, about to be happy. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Give of course. us the word, bro. <laughs> yeah, they and probably I was like, man, because I, I see him on there and he's always like, he's doing something with his hands. I'm like, damn, well, is he going to be all right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was sober doing it, I probably wouldn't be all off the. Probably would be all shit. He needs yeah. some energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, had to get I think, I think it really works though, man. Because all of our all of our audience, man, they smoke weed, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I think yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what makes it work, man. Oh yeah, you know definitely. What I'm saying?
And yeah. even there's a lot of people that don't smoke that still enjoy us too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think a lot of a lot of people watch because a lot of people watch us, and I see sometimes where the comments, man, I can't smoke, but man, y'all y'all <laughs> y'all hit it for me or something. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of people just like to sit there and watch oh, watch yeah. people indulge and stuff like that. Yeah. Like I love watching the weed videos on YouTube and stuff like that. Hell, I ain't sitting there smoking. I'm watching Burner and them all doing all in uh, grow houses and all yeah. that stuff. So to me, it's all oh, that shit is cool. Man, yeah. That's because we had a recent guest who had like a. Uh, followers of their own and some of them have to be happen to be doctors oh, wow. so you know they don't smoke but they thought it was cool you know the whole idea of us smoking and shit so that's that's pretty far it's, it's accepted whether yeah, you yeah. smoke or not you know what i mean yeah. you accept oh, yeah. us as we are so yeah i can relate to that because uh, when i first started watching like i don't smoke you know what i mean and but just watching y'all and listening to y'all i could relate because y'all are from my this city my yeah. city that i live in as well and just hearing y'all talk about like topics that are related it's like oh this is pretty cool and i find myself laughing and being entertained with it you know what i mean oh, really? so i mean I, I can totally relate to that man so how, how do you pick your your topics or uh guests for each each podcast uh on your i guess on your network uh with the uh with the with the news with the topics we usually try to get like the hot topics within the week we usually don't try to go over like like a week's time so the thing something happened like two weeks ago like we try to cover stuff like what happened within like the past week mm. so that's why we try to shoot a, a news episode like every week so that way we could just stick to that week's topic we're not covering stuff that happened last month and stuff two months ago every now and then we'll throw something in there that may have happened last month or two three weeks ago but more more or less we try to stick to the topics that have happened within that week so people will know exactly what we're talking about mm. they don't for, we live in a time frame i feel like where people's attention span is so short yeah that if you let that two we three weeks go every day yeah, <laughs> that if you sure. let if you let too much time go that then people are gonna already forget about that happen because mm. yeah, i only remember what happened two weeks ago on, on, on yeah. social media straight yeah so, <laughs> so like so do you find yourself like looking through facebook all the time or like uh news all... news sources instagram uh TikTok shit like that. Oh yeah, all 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 different new wherever wherever there's uh news being shared to yeah. everything shit. K triple I, K R, you know what I'm saying? Wherever yeah. you can find some news. Give me some Vox, give me some ABC. I think Apple Apple has like the Apple News, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah all that yeah. shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. And with the guests, each each host usually gets their own their own guest. If it's like a problem with them getting a guest or something, I'll try to help out. Freak will try to help out and get some guests. But usually each host gets their own guest. Nice. Yeah. That's what's up. And then so you got, let me see, I think I had it uh so you got Red Hot News. Chop it up, concert series, off the Kush. Yeah, mm -hmm. off the Kush. Off Shout the Kush, out school. Uh, school. sports, right now. Sports. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. Are, you, are you still doing yours? The uh... I'm gonna come back and do it, man. But I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna do the conspiracy theories anymore, man. People kind of trip out on that, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <right. laughs> like nah, because like uh, for real, man. People trip out on that, man. When you start talking about some crazy stuff, though, they kind of look at me, kind of like, damn, nigga, like I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but that's yeah. the point of it, though. Yeah. Like, if y'all go back and y'all watch the one that we had with Alex, Droop was doing one that was talking about the was it the Anunnaki or something like yeah, that the we we're on like a little a short version of the anunnaki explanation and uh alex was like tripping out that how close it was to like the religion that maybe he grew up learning type oh, yeah. of shit and he's like i don't know what to believe anymore yeah. kind of so, <laughs> so it worked <laughs> it worked you know what i mean like so I, I i don't think you should change that part up yeah right. i don't know man we might come back we might we might do one this weekend man you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so how do you so how do you go about like uh picking the people to host those you know those shows or do you just stumble upon those shows or you a group of Man, people actually, an idea? every everybody came up with their with their own show and they came to me straight up with the idea and and it was basically on me to approve or not but I haven't really disapproved no shows besides freaks <laughs> hey, and there's like and i've come with like 10 of them bro i've come with like 10 of them let's not even front every single one is like nah that's not for me freak but you could go and do that on the black leaders and i'll support you yeah. i'm like shit bro i i guess you know what i mean but uh, it is what it is. Like <laughs> I definitely have not. But Free got inside. something coming too. He's he's coming around finally, man. He got I'm something doing. coming, man. We just got to figure out what it's gonna be. Nah, we just got to figure out what he's okay with. <laughs> That's That's not gonna gonna be be. So I'm gonna stay forever behind. This this is the one of the few times you're gonna catch me in front of the camera. So yeah, yeah he wants some spotlight today. Mm -hmm. Oh come on, <laughs> <laughs> he's doing himself right now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what are some what are some memorable 
uh, conversations or moments that y'all had on the show or any one of the shows? Gatekeepers. Mm. Yeah. On like the news one, yeah, like the gatekeepers. That's one we always we ain't talked about it in a while, but when we kind of it first started, up. it was always coming up. D while we're having other interviews with other people, they'll say that word, and mm. we'll look at each other like, "Yeah, yeah." Let's see where he's about to go with oh, this okay. shit. You know what I mean? Because the idea of a gatekeeper to me, I don't think it exists in corpus because there's nothing here that we can't do for ourselves. Mm. You know what I mean? Like no disrespect to anybody doing this podcast, but nowadays all you need is this. Yeah. Nah, yeah, right. that's it and you got a podcast like you know so it's just that simple so i don't think any, there's any gatekeepers here but that's where my conversation on that part goes mm -hmm. and that's like with the, like anything i guess it's like with the music stuff like people don't want to let you on a show shit throw your own show you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. we, luckily they didn't have to go that route you know what i'm saying we they even though we only did something virtual it was still giving them uh Credibility, man, and giving them a, a, a shot to do to the opportunity and shot to do their thing, you know. Platform, what I'm saying? They can share, and once they, they did that, they did way more shows. They, yeah. they way more shows after that. How many y'all done got under y'all's belt since since that first one? Five already, Five, and that's just in this year already. So, how do you how do you feel about that for for you? Like, honestly, it's that just opportunity like, it's crazy. It's kind of like it's kind of like a movie how everything just played out, like how I just hit them up and like nobody in Corpus really knew of us, you know what I mean. Mm. And then shit just like turned around and now like every time I'm out somewhere with them, like everybody just knows NBA now, like. And then yeah, from doing no they, shows they to. They bring it to like up front and then the city type shit. Oh, to, wow. Doing the San Antonio show yeah. with the whole sold out crowd and stuff like yeah, that, you facts. know what I'm saying? So. Sure, when we did the, was it the tour drive thing, me and Alex brought it, brought them in there, let them do a little thing on the 105. Yeah, facts. Step to the back and let them get their shine on. I think they locked in with Trace after that, right? And yeah. Got the music played. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard a song on the radio a couple of weeks ago, man. Yeah, I was like, right man, that's what's up. <laughs> it, it, it costs you nothing to hook somebody up, man. Well, like, why why you decide real. to do that? Because not a lot of people will do that. I mean, why? Yeah. Because I just feel like that's how it should be. Like any play that I got, if I can pass it to him, I'm a. I tried to pass him something the other day, and he kind of like passed it back. <laughs> I'm like. This ain't no pitch back. I'm giving it to you. Like, what? Go <laughs> run the ball. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Uh, from time to time, he's done that for me. Actually, just weeks ago, passing me a photography gig. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, whatever went with that. But yeah. that's, uh, it costs you nothing to pass that play mm -hmm. to somebody else, man. We all went in like that. Like, like seeing Kai do their thing at the radio station. Like, it was a proud moment. I didn't know but Kai, but maybe about a month at that time. Oh, wow. yeah, Period. Fast. So, you know, when when I saw that they had that hunger and drive for it, I'm like, I'm like, shit. Why then I'm passing it to the right person. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not wasting this play on somebody. So. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, everything you do doesn't be wasted on anybody. But, you know, it's all a lesson learned either way. Do, do, yeah, you, feel, sure. do you feel like you're that uh, you, you guys are like at an older stage of the game than some of the younger guys? Fuck yeah. I am. I'm 40, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Does it feel does it feel weird at that point or I mean it's just, no but you know what no, I, I used to think that growing up because because people are like you can't be this age and be a rapper but nobody tells that shit to a country artist nobody's worried about the Hano artist being exactly. fifty or twenty or fifteen mm -hmm. you know what I mean they just let them play because it's about music that's what it's been like for me because this is the world that we grew up in we grew up in this culture you can't take that away from me like you know what I mean yeah. like. That's yeah, just all part age, of my life. You can't put an age limit on your culture, bro. At all. Or on music. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, all that shit just goes with it, bro. I feel like that's just common sense in that same... Yeah, that's what's up. Man, that's awesome. So, when you started the the podcast, you 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 mentioned in one podcast I was listening to that you're you're the type of person you were waiting until you get all the equipment and all that stuff yeah. before you get started. Yeah. Uh, so, now you got all the stuff. You got couches. You got all kinds of... Man, yeah. I seen that sign that one dude gave y'all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, that's a dope. Shout out, shout out, Inky Blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, man, that's dope. So, uh, behind the scenes, what are some of the challenges... The challenges that you have now as opposed to back then with your production or, or what are some of the challenges you faced in producing and maintaining uh your podcast uh especially given the unique theme of, of each show man honestly the only challenge that i really feel like i faced is is like nervousness <laughs> i thought you were gonna say equipment it, well not yeah, really yeah uh, but you can say like sometimes we'll have like faulty mic course and right stuff on, like right that on. but the only challenge i feel like is like 
whenever we do a, like a uh, like a concert series and an interview in the same day, then I have to switch stuff around. Uh, or, yeah. which a lot of people don't know, man, I'm going to just be straight up. Every time I get ready to interview somebody, and it's like a one-on-one -on -one interview and it's just me doing it, man, I'll be nervous as hell. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, people don't know that. They just sit there probably sit. Because I, I, I try to keep like a, a calm demeanor, so you probably don't see it. Watch it, man. I'll be, before the interview start, I'll be nervous as hell. It probably ain't like after a minute or two. That's when I'm like, okay, like, yeah. it's, it start feeling natural now, but Count shit. the blunts. Yeah. From now on, y'all pay attention. Count the blunts. Depending on how many he smoked is how nervous he was. <laughs> He's all, now I'm going to pay attention, shit. I smoked an ounce. Damn, this motherfucker done ran me nervous. <laughs> I'm going to say that DQ one, I was super nervous for that DQ one. And then after I got done with it, man, a lot of people hit me up and they were like, man, that was like the best one you did. That was like a real good interview. And I was like, bro, I was like super nervous the whole damn interview. But shit, I guess I, guess I did good. Yeah, mm. y'all made y'all made me hella nervous when I when I saw all y'all sit down. I was like, oh shit, I'm freaking nervous right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I already know how it go, bro. Straight up, I know how it go. I feel like, see, like this this seems like somewhere I'd be more nervous. You know what I mean? Mm, like yeah, I, 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 all these lights and big cameras. And I wasn't nervous different. when we came here. Like this just feels like yeah, it don't yeah. it don't feel like, like I guess back me, at home. Me, yeah, me kinda. being a guest is like. That's that's like normal for me, and I guess like I'm getting used to like the on the other part because yeah. I just watch so many podcasts on YouTube and stuff like that that I'm seeing like both ends of the spectrum. I'm like, man, a guest ain't really that hard. You just got to answer questions. It's, yeah. the, <laughs> it's the dude that's hosting that got to come up with. You got to really do well, some real journalism type work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Do you how do you find yourself like preparing for an interview? It just depends on who I'm interviewing. Some interviews I'll uh, go back and do like a lot of homework, depending on how long or what what type of uh, what type of because a lot of people, a lot of local artists, it's hard to like go in, on YouTube and yeah. and type in their name and can get a whole bio on them. Yeah. So uh, I find myself a lot of times asking other people about them or. Like Freak was saying earlier, man, within these past few weeks, we've gathered up so much information through all the other interviews that we're doing that we're basically asking questions that have been thrown to us. Oh, such and such did this uh, in 1995. So, yeah, we heard from such and such in 1995, you did this. Can you explain like that? So yeah. it's just all like coming full circle at this point. Yeah, oh, we get like yeah. several sides to the same story. Yeah. Yeah. To the cool. same concert, yeah. to the same show. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. other people verifying like celebrity status type things. And, and what was it? So uh, don't like, re don't redo whatever somebody else did. Was it the did game? With yeah, yeah, with the... Uh, the, the uh was yeah the game story yeah homeboy we had two different versions of the game story they told stories about the game coming to corpus and the homies from greenwood basically having to check the game and we heard two different versions of that one which both lined up to be the exact same thing just heard it from two different people <laughs> like, yeah. bino on facebook man appreciate you he says appreciate my interview dj lil king ramon esparza droopy droopy martinez They're already marines 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 uh, custom shoes coming on, coming for the table. I've got both y'all podcasts. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. Already. Yeah, and, and yeah, to be Bino's honest, a real one, bro. He, oh, yeah, Bino, oh, yeah. Bino has come through every year for us, uh, aside from all this, on uh, our fucking We On Fire basketball game that we do. He brings us uh, with a uh, custom theme song. Oh, yeah. Like, from scratch, bro. Like, and every year is like top the year before, which is fucking crazy because he mm -hmm. keeps pushing them out like nothing. Yeah. So. Yeah, shout out to him. He's definitely a man with many hats, as they say. He's sure. grinding too, bro. His story is awesome. And I, I found out, uh, he actually shot, uh, shot me a message. And then when I was preparing, I watched y'all's entire interview with him, dude. Oh my God, dude. His story is awesome. His, like, his, uh, his custom cleats uh, story didn't come until like an hour and, and 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Because he's been so, in, so much in the scene yeah, yeah. beforehand, yeah. which was amazing to well, me. Well, see, when I do like the personal interviews, when I do like my interviews, the Rodden Howard DJ Lil King interviews, I try to like, if they're a rapper, like, let's, because that's when I watch interviews, that's how I want to I want to uh, see the person being interviewed. If you rap, like, rap is just a part of your story, bro. Like, you, oh, yeah. you weren't rapping out the womb, fam. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we'll get to the rap. Let's know, let's know about you growing up. And I just feel like if you're coming on a podcast, you should be willing to talk about stuff like that. Unless you're just going on a promo run. Yeah. If you're yeah. going on a podcast to do a life story, and I always tell people, too, like, Cause a lot of people be like, "Hey, what are we gonna talk about?" But like, we're gonna do a life story. Like, if there's anything you don't want to talk about, just let me know. Da 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 da. Mm. But I tell people I'm like, that's why a lot of the interviews that I do, man, they're always like two or three hours because I don't just jump straight into what their occupation is, what what their uh, 
whatever they do, like the rap, if your graffiti is on or whatever you do, like you say, uh, we had DJ Joe on there from the Bomb Records. He mm -hmm. owned the record stores. And, man, we learned about his life way before he even opened a record store. Awesome. Yeah. And he was, like, a key point to a lot of people, local artist-wise, because he was where you could have your shit sold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he was, like, in the same sense, like, kind of what King looked up to growing up. Yeah, was like, shit, I could do that, too, type of thing. You know, maybe yeah. not yeah. intentionally, but it was in the brain working, like, damn, this is dope. I want to do this type of shit, which is... I mean, it really is. You get to sell music and listen to music or fucking DVDs or bootleg DVDs. Yeah. That's my heaven right there. We're, going, we're bootlegging everything in this bitch. We got the real and the fake behind the curtain. <laughs> hey, let's keep it real, man. Fuck all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good on, man. So, yeah. We Shout never sold DJ no Joe, bootlegs though. at the plug, man. Yeah, well. <laughs> Shout out DJ Joe, though. That's my dude, man. Yeah, for sure, man. By that time, yeah, DJ Joe yeah, he, had already went down. So, yeah, we He's were, come through we for us, like, on, on multiple occasions, too. Like, we didn't have any sound going. Uh, I think it was at, uh, oh, we needed more sound at the, was it Toy Drive? Yeah. Or whatever it was One at the them. block. Um, he just pulls up with speakers out of nowhere and just, I'll be back for them later. I swear they're still <laughs> sitting in Alex's garage to this day. And yeah. they've been like since November, bro. <laughs> like he not even worried about them. So shout out DJ Joe for just yeah, like, yeah. you know, straight off the love, man. That love for the game is, is the same kind of play passing thing yeah. I'm talking about, bro. Like he ain't asked for nothing, not worried about nothing, but he knows at the same time when he makes that call, we gonna answer. Yeah, you know. And and y'all are it's and y'all are gravitating toward the the hip hop scene or the rap scene or whatever. I don't know I don't know what you call it, because that's what y'all are into, right? Is yeah. that it? Well, I, I, mean, I, I would say that, but we've had like we've done like food places. We went yeah. to the most comida, you know what I'm saying? We had Rick on there. He fed us before. Then we did, uh, I want to say it was like our 50th news episode. We did it live at a, at a smoke shop. Mm -hmm. And Rick brought us more food over there, too, and everything. So, yeah. like, and shout out Rick. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout even out that one shout podcast out I did with the dude who was a boxing uh, trainer. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and then we had a, a good one. We had uh, a dude on there. Uh, Gidry, I can't remember his first name. But he had wrote a book. And mm -hmm. he was on there promoting his book. We yeah. ran through his life story and stuff like that. Yeah. D. I Gidry. Shout out D. Gidry, man. Shout out Lil E, man. I see you, man. Appreciate it. Who's that? Uh, Eric Earl? Yeah, Eric Earl? shout out my dog, my dog Lil E, man. What's good with it? Shout out Bobo, a.k.a. Roach, a.k.a. Scoop Dose producer. Cal Cast the Code from the 956. I see you, baby. Block leaders for life. So that's that's actually a dude where, where when I was doing graphics, he was doing super dope graphics for the Valley. And instead of, like, competing with this fool, I was like, bro, why don't you come slide with me, I'll cover whatever cost it costs for you to be a graphic designer. Like, you know, I'll get you some cards and all that shit. You just gotta stamp the block leader symbol on that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> He's that deal, bro. Took that shit and ran. He's one of the nicest fucking artists I fucking dealt with. Is so. that that's your brand? Uh, block block leaders? leaders? Yeah. Yeah, so homie, homie uh, shout out my boy uh, David Gomez. He came up with this shit about 2010. And uh, we wanted to start as a graphic design, doing videos and stuff like that. And he gave us the name. Uh, he, cause, uh, he's all because we block bleeders. We bleed blocks and da da da, -da <laughs> and, and, you know, off of the zero thing and everything. So over the years, I've gotten shit about it. Like, you're not, you not really block bleeding because block bleeders go out there and sell crack. Nah, nah, nah. I'm like, well, I thought the idea is, is I bleed the block. I bleed the block for a different kind of rock now. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is me taking a picture or doing some videos or even taking you to a studio to record. Whatever. I'm still bleeding the block in a different way. But It's a stupid question. What does that mean? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, to actually uh, pump the block as in hustling on the block. Yeah. Okay, okay, to okay. have a hustle. To have a grind. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, so we're going to bleed the block dry from whatever the block has to give. Mm. So I'm going to soak up whatever that block has, which, it, uh, you know... In the videos and photography in the beginning, the graphics was was how we were approaching it. Like we were everywhere. They were paying us to go down to the valley all the way up to like San Antonio and Houston, you know, room and board type shit and uh, recording rap battles and stuff like that nice. in the beginning, uh, doing graphics, flyers, all that shit. And yeah, it took a shit. It took a few of us to get that shit done. One of my homies who started out with me now works at Channel Three, and he's like the main producer of like something like this you know what i mean like for the news actually so mm -hmm. uh yeah shout out to him shout out tony compos shout out adam compos all of them can you share some behind the scenes stories or moments that stand out to you on the podcast podcast wherever i mean concert series or i know you guys do uh smoke walk or just something behind the scenes that uh that stand out to you oh man uh 
some of the freestyle sessions that we used to have, like before we would actually cut the camera on, like for the news, like we've like we would just be sitting in there, like have everything ready, but we wouldn't be live yet. And I'll just be having like the computer on, like playing beats and everybody would just be like freestyling and stuff <laughs> like that. I think some of those actually got like posted to like YouTube and I mean, not YouTube on Facebook and stuff like that. I don't know if they hit like the feed. I think they were, I know some of them were posted to stories and stuff like that. What else? Let me see. I think uh, for us doing the cave shit was always uh, with uh, Mama Dusa. Shout out Mama Dusa. We had a like a little assistant who would help us out, and she's not a little assistant. She a G like a motherfucker. Shout out to her. Uh, but uh, she would help. We had so many people wanting to be on the show at that time that we had to have somebody help us and schedule and shit like that because we both had whatever was going on outside of that show. That uh, you know, we had people coming in kind of like you do, I guess, like from an eight to nine hour and then a nine to ten and mm -hmm. whatever the hell. But we were doing like what thirty minute segments at the time, so maybe like three or four interviews a night. Yeah, and this is all done out of my crib, so people are like walking along the side of my house and coming <laughs> into the back. They sitting in the backyard while we're doing the <laughs> interview and she's out there like hey y'all are next they're about to be done in about five cool. minutes like when we're just straight it's not a professional studio or nothing but no. a lot of behind the scenes work for That's that cool. shit was like worth it right, right. you know what i mean because we were overwhelmed with that shit whenever they oh, did wow. whenever they did the nbh uh concert series too that was that was a real good day too shit that was a real good look yeah, I, was, I was like really proud of them you know what i'm saying for like being able to perform and they had like a whole bunch of people tuning in. You had y'all's families all tuned in and everything yeah. and shit like that. Like that was real dope too. That was Richard's birthday too, right? Didn't he come with the cake that night? <laughs> I can't uh, remember. I That's the night you met him. No, that was the the first night when we did the uh when we did the interview. That's, That's right. right. That's right. And then like behind the scenes from that night, uh Rich was just playing all his beats and now I was like, these beats are fire, where are they from? And then they y'all pointed at Rich. And then he was like, you want some or what? I'll send them to you. Mm. And I was like, hell yeah, I want them. Shit. Shout out King Rich. That was actually his birthday night, yeah. and he showed up with his own birthday cake. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, we took a couple of slices and left the rest for the house. But yeah, uh, it was instant connection for him and Kai because Kai was filling his beats and shit. And I'm like, shit, that's, that's homie right here. So awesome. before we even left the room or left that fucking sentence, like we'd already put the fucking beats in his inbox. So, nice, yeah. man. That's you know, awesome. Let him, and then shit, honestly, before the week later, Later, this fool dropped a song just to match it already like <laughs> like yeah it was it was fast work it was a good relationship to start out get introduced to the red hat podcast uh, i got invited man i got invited to yeah whenever podcast. i started the news like i kind of like handpicked the people that i wanted to do the news right i'm gonna say handpicked because i i guess i would say I, I made a post saying who wanted to be on the news and and asking if there was like some hungry individuals that were down to do a podcast and I had a bunch of people hit me up. So I guess wow. I kind of did handpick the people that are actually on here. So how do you, how did you go about that process? I mean, do you, do you kind of look at their background? Like what, what I just figured what, what can this person bring to the table? Because everybody wanted to do a podcast. Hell you supply the equipment. Who doesn't want to do a damn <laughs> podcast? You know what I'm saying? Like shit, like, so I just kind of like got people who had what, what they consider in today's terms, who had motion going on, who had stuff going on, who nah. weren't just stagnant, who were doing stuff on their own without a podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like they were going to be making moves regardless if they're on a podcast or not. That's kind of like wow. what I went for. Amazing. So as so one of the tri criteria is for them to be able to, to smoke some butt or what? Nah, nah. nah. <laughs> it made it better. <laughs> it made it better. I was going to say, we got a couple of hosts right now that are not smoking. Currently, yeah. So, yeah. you know. That's cool. Uh, 956 nine, has love for Corpus, uh, says the... Yeah, yeah that's the that's Cal Casta, Cal Cole. Already. He's one of the battle rappers from the Valley. He used to be part of the battle rap, Battle Kings. Got somebody on Twitch? Wow, what's up, Corpus in the house from Cancun, Mexico? Ooh. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was that? Uh, I don't know. Who's Shout watching us while they on vacation? Shout out Diesel. Ah, right. <laughs> Shout out Diesel King, man. Whoever you are. Who's that? That's a good look right there. Diesel King 15. <laughs> Diesel King 15. State your real name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. It, in the y'all's, y'all's, I like y'all's podcast. It helps out too because I have obviously had people that you've had on yours and it helps out too because I, I watched the interview to, to, to help me prepare for the interview like with you with uh kai or even droopy so it's it's awesome that we're doing it and I, and another reason i want to have y'all on is because it's like it's it's a community that we have and i want y'all to know like i'm part of the community too and I, I don't want there to be any like you know what i mean beef or whatever which i mean 
There's a lot of that going on. We don't need more of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not ever <laughs> she. Some podcast beef? Yeah, I mean, podcast beef. I mean, I don't know. Just not not just podcast. Oh, okay. I was like, who bro. else is out there? Like, let me know. Because I feel <laughs> like we kind of we kind of like neck and neck right now. So you know what I mean? Nah, like, you guys are killing it, bro. Who? Did nah, you shit, you killing it, bro. Did you? Nah, come on. How, how did the uh, what you call best of the best thing go after all? Man, you know what? I didn't even. I don't even know who put my name in there, bro. I wasn't Stop. even. Who won it? Stop. I don't know, and I don't. I, to be even before that, dude, I was like, not. I don't even care about that, dude. It's and a good then, thing to be nominated for, though. I mean, even if you didn't I, I, care I for was, it. I was very humble by it. I even yeah. made a post about it, dude. And I was like, damn, this is crazy. Uh, so I, I, I guess I'm honored. You know what I mean? If if I do win. So next time, I'm going to put y'all's name in there. When, when, is the, name in there? when is it announced? Nah, if it was, it, nah, shit, nah, we didn't make it. We got nominated nominated by the, we got nominated we by nominated the streets, like bro. That, so why not? Do you feel like, do you feel like there's a discrimination? We, that nah, type of I don't, I don't, I don't, don't, I don't know like, if that's the right word. I don't think people see us as no, no, no. Me personally, man, I really don't think that people see us as really professional like that because the way that we the way that we operate, you know what I'm saying? Because we're smoking, we're talking right. shit, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we get off the sometimes we get off the topic. You know what I'm saying? It's just I don't I don't so my me personally, bro, I just don't feel like people really see it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like yours what, is because like, yours is a little more structured than ours. You know what I'm saying? We kind of freestyle most of the time, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I say our viewers don't vote. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Our viewers are not voters. They're not online clicking these extra links to go and vote shit. Yeah, everybody that's on Instagram, they they worry about that type of stuff. And y'all in y'all's fan base is mo seems like it's mostly on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For damn sure. Damn near the majority of our audience is for damn sure Facebook people. Yeah, and then and then y'all start y'all do sh uh, the shorts and all that other stuff. Did you do you handle all that stuff? I do some. Jupe does the majority yeah, of it. Yeah, nah, that's, that's awesome, bro. Idea. Drew's the that. meme maker. Yeah. yeah. I'm the meme king, baby. The meme king? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, this is a Riding High exclusive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I put all that together, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Ah, uh, man. So what's what's going on? So you have these different things, uh, di different podcasts within the network. I'll call it a network. Uh, what's in the future for Riding High? In the future, we're definitely going to have a music review show. That's probably like what's next on the agenda. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say next. It's next on my agenda. We probably have some more shows that maybe could possibly be coming before that. But definitely next on my agenda is is a music review show where nice. send us your music. We're gonna have a panel of people there listening to the music, and we're gonna tell you if your shit's jamming, if your shit's jamming, or if it's trash. Ooh, you know come what I'm on, saying? Yeah, we gotta smash it or trash it, something like that. Yeah, yeah. still banging the slang, banging the slang, banging the slang. Like that. <laughs> that, that was some from some years back with yeah. the same concept. But. Yeah, yeah. It's a, that's the good thing about a lot of this shit with the technology. We get to come around to some of these ideas we weren't able to properly execute. Oh, wow. Because we were doing Facebook Live when Facebook Live started. Yeah. So that was like, what the fuck is this shit? Like when people were watching us <laughs> do it for the first time, they were like, I didn't even know you could go live. Horrible like, quality and shit. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah, Nothing yeah. was up to Freeze par that it is now. all types of <laughs> shit, bro. Like, yeah. And this is just straight off yeah, your phone. Yeah, this God. isn't even like, yeah. you know, restream type of quality type of shit back then. But uh -huh. mind you, that was... 2016 so the technology helped you to do those ideas that you did have when you prior to having it it's easier it's easier yeah it's easier uh, to come across like now everything is a lot of it's a push of a button type shit mm. you know compared to actually know how shit works like, <laughs> like you can put a filter on something now before you had to know how to create that look of a filter you know like yeah. now it's just like yeah you had to go in there manually and try to mess yep. with this stuff. <laughs> So yeah, now everything's just right there, man. You know Bump what I'm it or dump it. That's what Skit said. Bump it or dump it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it sounds funny, but I like that. But yeah, Daddy Cree probably gonna come with his way. Daddy Cree shows coming soon. We're waiting on uh actually his logo to get made. And once Daddy Cree gets his uh logo made, uh man, look, the podcast uh by Daddy Cree will be coming soon. We got DQ's show with DQ's Corner. Mm. That's coming soon. We got, we actually filmed one episode. She just wasn't too comfortable with, with it. So we're going to go back and do it again. And we're going to get it right. So we got a couple of shows coming to the uh, yeah, network. Me and King soon. were actually talking about doing like a, a music video thing over here. Remember? Yeah. Like, you remember watching, uh, I don't know if you ever, you were into rap, right? Remember watching The Basement, man? Rap City, rap The Basement. Sounds, sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah. Where they do the freestyle thing and all the other stuff, and they play videos and stuff like that. Me and King were actually talking about doing a show like that, man. Wow. Bring, bringing something like that back, man. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, man. Y'all be on the lookout for that, man. I think it's about time to put it out. Already. Hell yeah. Man, so how do you find yourself continuing to do this stuff, even though, like, uh, Droopy was mentioning how people, they they look at it in a certain way, but 
how do you can find yourself continuing to just keep going just in spite of that or is man just over the past two days uh, three days after all that bullshit went down man i've had like 30 people literally text me call me saying man y'all continue what y'all doing man y'all keep up what y'all doing man like and now i've also had people saying man don't even respond just y'all just keep doing what y'all doing i've had people say man yeah y'all did what y'all did was the right thing man y'all keep pushing so mm -hmm. i mean this is people that don't even uh that I don't even really talk to on a on a on a daily basis. Some the people, regular viewers, man. Yeah, hell yeah. And some people like, man. Shout out to OG Terry Amy. He's like one of the dudes here who's known for always having like a clean clean cars and shit. He's like one of the slab kings of corpus. I would say, man. Terry Amy messaged me on the Rod and High page like a couple of weeks ago. He was like, man, young brother, y'all doing a damn thing over there. Keep it up. And mm -hmm. I'm like. I I didn't even know you we existed to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and that was real dope too. Shit. Hell yeah. Shout out Terry Amy, man. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So was it originally a video podcast? Uh or did did y'all do audio first or No, it was originally you... it was originally a video, a video? and a, oh, okay. yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. 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 You got yours on Spotify? Yeah, I got it. How come you, are y'all putting it on We just shoot so much. Like, I just, like, it, we, it, we I need an assistant. Yeah. And not really that. It just needs to be <laughs> categorized into different things instead of it just being seven shows under one thing. Yeah, dude, I think oh, you had sent me that link of that one thing where you could separate them and yeah, put them Yeah. Castos. Cast, the one I use, castos.com. Uh, you pay one, you pay one fee, and you can have multiple podcasts. Oh, really? And you can name the network under each podcast, okay, so you can do right now network, and it'll show it on each one of them. Oh, really? And if you go on Spotify to whichever one, you can click on the network, and it'll show all the other ones. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I still got the link to that in my inbox. Yeah, too. yeah, Hell yeah. I'm gonna check that one out. Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, because I definitely I listen to Spotify, I listen to podcasts, and I wish y'all were on there. I was like, yeah, how come they're not on here? So I always got to watch. There's some on there that's just real. Old. Oh, yeah. I haven't updated it in probably like man, probably like nine months. So there's there's some on there. It just hasn't been updated in a long time. That's because somebody recently asked me. I sent you. Yeah, that, I forwarded yeah. them that message because so many people reach out to each of us separately. You know what okay. I mean? So I, I feel like we all forwarding messages to King. Like, <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> you know, what do you want to do? This is you know, what so and so is telling me. So, <laughs> how does that feel? You get all the messages, King. Overwhelmed sometimes. <laughs> he needed <an> assistance. <laughs> not, not this. It's just like the thing that uh, the overwhelms me is everybody uh, always has. Uh, and these are not just the uh, the in house hosts. Like a lot of people from the outside too always be like, "Man, you should interview this person. You should interview oh, this yeah. person. You should interview this person. You should interview this person." And it's like. I remember, what, shout out to Donnie Houston. He's a podcast. He does a podcast out of Houston. Nice. And he was interviewing, like, all my favorite, like, Houston legends. So we're literally in his comments just like, you should get him next. 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 And whenever I start doing a podcast, it's like, well, damn, I see why it ain't just as easy as you should get him next. You should get him next. Like, you got to do homework on this person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to know a little bit about this person. You can't just really drive, bring somebody in and don't know shit about them and just start, like freestyling some shit and do i do freestyle like some interviews but if even if i do freestyle the interviews i still know some some direction that i'm headed i'm mm -hmm. not just bringing somebody blind in that i have no idea of their story mm -hmm. so that's that's how i kind of keep it with a little bit of structure and you can't it. really open up your calendar either pick days because yeah. oh my god that'd be crazy mm -hmm. uh shout out to the people on tiktok cantu's in there uh garza uh texas uh how about g Shout out Havo G. Havo G was the first one to uh what do you want to call it? Actually it was sliced pizza. Sliced pizza. I can't I can't I can't knock no Sergio Cantu. But yeah, okay. No, he did a cash donation. Slice did a cash he did a fifty dollar cash donation. Hey, well grass is cash around here. So straight up uh uh, shout out to Slice Pizza and shout out to Havo G for Damn Show too with the Matador Media Productions. And, and shout out to Bino with, with the, that. Uh, Ben Stang and Customs like an also. Avalanche. Mm -hmm. And also can't forget Paul. He came through with the sign too. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Inky Plug. So whoever's next, the expectations are hot in the mother. Oh, come on. Man. That's what's up. <laughs> How has being based in Corpus Christi influenced your content and connection with your audience? Man. It's kind of like at first I was kind of torn between it because I didn't want just another Corpus podcast. Mm. Like I really didn't. So I feel like at this point I'm kind of like embracing like the, the the Corpus thing because it's like basically if if I'm not getting interviews from people that are coming from out of town, then it's just basically it's just us on doing the news. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that. But we have to interview the people that we have around us until I have a budget to get people to come down here from. Houston or Dallas nice. or wherever, the, you know what I'm saying? To get a big name rapper down here, we're going to have to work with what we got. So at this point, we I ain't going to just say we're working with what we got because I'm enjoying doing this. I'm yes. enjoying learning all these stories and learning because I'm all, I've am i always been like a, a 
I ain't gonna say a hip hop a hip hop historian. I've always considered myself like a like a Houston hip hop historian. Mm -hmm. So now I'm kind of becoming. I ain't gonna even put myself in the category yet, but I'm starting <laughs> to learn a lot of the corpus rap history. So I ain't gonna call myself a corpus rap historian because you can't ask me what happened this, what happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't really know, but I'm I'm learning as as we're going. Yeah, for sure. I'll take that crown. Yeah, no, yeah, like man, what happened at the two live group show? <laughs> <laughs> Well, are we talking about that? Are we talking about the after party? Is this the after party? I just fucked it right there. There actually yeah. was one. That's funny you said that. Who was that? Who, that was, was Vic and Yeah, Vic and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They got the after story, so. Yeah, hey, I, I like that. I like that you're, it's not corpus. I like that the brand is not corpus based, but, but y'all are in corpus. Yeah. Because it it has the opportunity to go past Corpus. Yeah, we do have viewers like from all outside of Corpus. So like we got viewers from yeah Houston, San Antonio. Shout out to San Antonio, man. I got a lot. We get a lot of love from people in San Antonio. Some people was just tuned in from San Antonio just a minute ago. Shout out to San Antonio, uh, Kingsville, Texas, man. I've been messing with a lot of the, ra the young and up and coming rappers from coming out of Kingsville. They're not even from Kingsville. They're from all over Texas. They just go to school at Kingsville, and that's through Kai Serving. I can't Wapo, say, right? Wapo yeah, that thing, yeah, yeah. Kai Serving put, put that same dough with all them, and I've been fucking with them little youngsters real tough. They they excite me, man. I ain't gonna lie, it excites me more to work with the younger, up and coming ones than it does to work with the ones that's just been stagnant for the past yeah, 10, the younger, 15 years. The younger years. ones are more appreciative, man. And they're yeah. More, yeah, they're more they're more energetic, man. You know what I'm saying? They're more like, oh damn, this is really going on. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. They appreciate they shit. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting because you think it would be opposite. Nah, these old niggas feel entitled. Feel entitled, man. That's shit. so crazy, like, bro. That's what I've been. Needing. I've been doing this for years. Yeah. I deserve this. And nigga, y'all uh, created the Rod High podcast for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you, like oh, they haven't put in the work or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's so crazy, man. So how, how do you how do you engage with your listeners and the local community? Any particular events or interactions that have been impactful? We've done the smoke walk events. I want to say we've done like three so far. We went and did uh we went on the radio too. They actually they premiered a song on the radio, uh Kai and Can too, take a flight. Y'all peeped that out on all uh streaming platforms. Produced by King Rich. Uh yeah. we also did like the uh the uh the toy drives that they that we were having at the had a toy drive at the block. We had a uh what else? Uh, back to school uh, giveaway at the at the block. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So doing events and stuff like that. Every year, every August, the week before uh, school starts. Do you feel like you have to do events to to keep it going, or is just something that you like to do? You don't really have to. Like it, it's just something. Like I'm the type. I like to give back to the to the community. Like I like to give back to like the the the, the local rappers who I see trying. The ones who are, if you just sitting there and you ain't really trying, but you just expect people to just do stuff for you, nah, we, we can't help you. But if if you if you giving an effort, I'm the type of if you putting in the effort, like let's let's try to help you go a little bit further than what you maybe been then got so far. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I look at it as. That's how I looked at it. like whenever they were saying they couldn't get, I'm like, well, shit, we'll we'll, we'll put y'all on the on the podcast on the uh, concert series and. We'll get we'll share some of our followers with y'all and pretty sure I gonna have some people that's tuning in that's probably hopefully they'll subscribe to our page. You know what I'm saying? Like I like to do I like to do mutual stuff. Let's let's do stuff that benefits both both, both sides. If it's just gonna benefit one side, nah, I, I ain't with that. Yeah, mm. and you have to be discerning. Like you have to be able to decide. Wow. Yeah. That that's a, it's interesting, man. How that outlook that you have on on helping people it makes me think about like your were your folks like that? Were your parents like that? Is that where you learned that from? When nah, actually, I probably learned that. Uh, and this people probably went. I learned that like in, I wouldn't even say in like TDC because I went to TDC in 2011. But I probably learned a lot of that stuff like in the halfway house, like mm -hmm. the halfway house. Like this was to me, it was a blessing that I, did, I didn't come straight home. I had to go to a halfway house and with going to a halfway house, they're going to teach you structure. Mm. A halfway house is 90 days. And during that 90 days, the first 10 days, you got to sit there. Then you got to get a job. You got to do all that. And it's just structure. And it's all about like, basically like not letting the person that's fucking, not, not letting the community fall. So, right. cause it, right, a halfway house is called a community. Yep. Yeah. So everybody has to do their part in that community to make sure this community don't course, fall. So course. you got people all leaning on each other's back to keep this, to keep this, just keep yeah. this, just keep this community up. I like that. I like that, man. We have to, and you have to help each other in order for the community to yeah, continue to thrive. Exactly. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. And when somebody's not wanting the com wanting to the if somebody, if thrive, somebody's, yeah, exactly, what, or, or not even that they're looking at they're looking out for them they're looking at themselves only and not looking at it in that perspective you know what I mean and that and when they continue to do that the community goes yeah part of the community yeah. goes down you know uh so was it uh, what kind of feedback do you have have you received from your audience and how has it shaped your shows. Man, the feedback has been real good. The only really place I see is like some negative stuff is on TikTok. And I don't really be on TikTok, so I don't really know how that works. But <laughs> that's like I remember when we first started, one of the comments that still sticks in my head to this day is, they just give anybody a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. And you're leaving out. You're leaving out the main part of that. That's why that you're leaving out the main though. part of it, though. But tell the first part of that story. Yeah, why did they say that? The comments stuck with no, me. No, 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 well, let us let us me. remind you then. Because Daddy Cree said something along the lines, man, that uh, she that Gangsta Boo didn't die a glorious death. We need to stop trying to. Praise her, her for that. Yeah. yeah, praise her for that because she died of a drug so, overdose or whatever. You so know they what took saying? offense. And so some people took offense to that, and so they started dogging on the podcast. Oh, you know come on, saying? bro! So, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was funny to hear at the time. I just I just read that in like an old black lady's voice. They didn't give anybody a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I read it whenever I saw the comment, and that That's shit just stuck with me. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh Bino, he said you uh you helped me get more followers with my business been staying custom so i appreciate the opportunity already uh everybody uh, abe franco on uh tiktok appreciate you leo on tiktok appreciate you guys for joining man who was on is... twitch Where, what happened to the twitch yeah, person who was the twitch person did they reveal themselves i don't know is he on there my it's all good Nah, he still got that mask on, right? Man, that's what's He's up, bro. Green, bro. Yeah, you guys. How you been since the last time we seen you over there? I've been good, man. Uh, it's busy. Been, it's been good. I've been busy. I've been trying to get uh, at least one person in every week, uh, or a group Jeez. or whatever. So you, like at least three or four past that number. A week. Yeah. Well, at, when I first when I started in here, I was trying to do like at least two a week, and then I and then finally kind of just slowed down for me. Uh, I obviously have to like pay for this spot yeah, right here, yeah, for sure. so I gotta, I gotta, you know, handle my finances a little better with dealing with that. But yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool talking to a bunch of different people, and it yeah, helps you're me. You talking get... to all walks of life? Oh yeah, for sure, man. Uh, I, I... What was one of your favorite guests, man? My favorite guest? Yeah. Uh, I, you guys are cool here, man. You guys mm -hmm. are a group. It's cool having like a lot of people because it keeps the conversation going. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I, li I like I like interviewing groups myself. Like yeah. I think interviewing groups is dope. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and like I I'm learning as I go too. Like sometimes I prepare. This is from Chat GPT, bro. <laughs> so I just put how does in... that work for you? It, it's working. It's working. I mean, I don't use it all the time, but I, I do. I have been using it a lot. Mm. Uh, not only for this, but for the other things that I'm doing, like I, uh, coming up with descriptions for like the YouTube videos or the Facebook. Uh, whatever i'll just type in you know make a whatever for this and that helps out a lot uh yeah i use ai to make the clips oh no, really yeah Hell yeah, yeah Hell so yeah. that that's very helpful uh, so i pay it and finances is a real big thing for me like just having to being able to set aside certain no, money. this podcast shit ain't cheap people don't understand it like yeah. that. that's why Need to pay me, man. Man, I had so many people tell call it be telling me. <laughs> and I ain't gonna even go into it. It's gotta come back, right? It's gotta come up somehow. I'm gonna just, I ain't gonna even say this person's name, bro. But shout out to homie. He called me and said, bro, people coming in your house using your AC, sitting on your couches, smoking, yeah, your, weed. smoking your weed, using your good microphones, uh, using your good interfaces, and y'all sitting there making them look pretty with the good cameras. They yeah. on the big screen TV. They on TV looking good. They ain't on TV looking uh fuzzy. They on TV looking good. Yeah. He said, bro, they should be paying you a hundred dollars. Exactly. That's what homeboy told me straight up. Oh yeah. Yep, exactly, bro. Like, and if, and if somebody wants to come on, come on the show, or or if I pay somebody to come on my show, yeah, if I pay somebody to come on my show, it be, they better have a huge influence online <laughs> to help my show, bro. You know, to 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 help my show grow because eventually, I would like to be monetized. I would like exactly. to have sponsors because I mean, it, all, all is coming out of pocket, bro. Yeah, hell it's yeah. all coming oh, out shit. of pocket. Hell yeah. So. Eventually, I want to get to that point to where I have sponsors or, you know, however, yeah, yeah. however my podcast can be funded so I can continue doing it. 
Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I think the, also yeah. you could get bigger, so you could get bigger guests. You know what exactly. I'm saying? A budget so where you could pay fifteen hundred dollars for a guest, where you yeah. could pay five thousand dollars for a guest. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you, we all want to get to that level, shit. Yeah. I feel like if my daughters weren't graduating this weekend, bro, I'd drop you a hundred dollars just to yeah, pass that good. bucket around, bro. <laughs> well, see, dude, the thought is there. Let's get, my pockets ain't there. <laughs> the he dropped the, he dropped the hundred dollars on us too. Shout out to Corpus Christi Originals. They dropped the hundred dollars on us too a while back. Shit. Oh shit! Yeah. Hell yeah! Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I, man, I just wish. I, personally, my thoughts are: I just wish our community had a better handle on money, mm. so that way we could. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Give to other other uh, you know creators in town that are doing stuff. Like just having that extra hundred dollars to be able to yeah. to, to bless y'all's podcast. I had it. Bam! There you go. You know what I mean? Because I was responsible with money up until that point. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we fucked it up for you. So <laughs> you guys messed it up. I could have. Yeah, no, I'm just <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying, man. Like, and I always come back to that that topic the topic of money and handling money well so that way you can continue to bless your community and that's yeah. that that that's where i'm coming from with that and see that's why i feel like the events that we do like the uh because a lot of people have told me man you should be charging people to do the riding high concert series man we ain't never charged nobody a dollar to do a concert series and even with the smoke walk events we do man we don't charge a dollar for for none of that stuff on say the very first one we did, we had like free hot dogs and what we had free we had free hot dogs and burgers or something out there. We yeah, gave away free hot food, dogs and chicken, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, chicken, yeah, all that, man. Yeah. yeah. Shout out QBR, man. QBR yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely hooked us up with the spot to be able to do whatever we want out there. And, yeah. Uh, where where are they located? QBR. Five twenty three. Five twenty three Taylor Street. Yeah, right, right across from the Color Town. Yes. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. And so every first Friday of the month, I ain't gonna lie, we kind of been piggybacking off the art walk. And, uh, <laughs> you know, no offense to them, but we do our own little thing. And, you know, as long as it's all kosher, we good. Yeah, that's what's up, man. You know? Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, man, how long how, how long have we been going, Maya? Appreciate y'all being here. Y'all Y'all want to share anything? We got, we're going about an hour. You need another hour to go? Yeah, we good. We good. Shit, man. Y'all make sure you follow the Riding High podcast. Y'all make sure y'all tune into all the shows that we do. Riding High News on Monday, Off the Cush with Scoob Dose on Tuesday, Riding High Sports on Wednesday. On Thursdays, we usually do the Riding High concert series, but man, they could pop up any day, man. Honestly, shit. Fridays, we usually keep it open. Uh, we don't really do nothing on Saturdays and Sundays, but during the week, man, it's always we always got something going on, and you never know when a Let's Chop It Up or a Riding High Concert Series may pop up. Shit, yeah, yeah. 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 for sure. Yeah. Make sure you make, like, subscribe, yeah. follow all that, and click on the thing to where whenever we do go live, it pops up on your on your thing, yeah. like notification. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hell yeah, y'all make yeah. sure y'all do that, man. Shout out to all of our hosts that ain't here. Shout out to Scoob Doe. Shout out to Joe Brock. Shout out to Can Two. Shout out to John Bell. Shout out to Daddy Cree. Shit, who else? Arson Banks. Banks. Shout out to all y'all. Shout out man. to his son. Oh, shout out yeah. to his son, Hitman Holcomb, bro. He's yeah. doing his best thing right now. You know what I'm saying? Shout what, out to what, him. What's dope about this shit? And I will give Keen this because he said he did handpick everybody. Everybody here has got the potential and does stand on their own. Yeah, exactly. So it's a collective of people who are already established doing something on their own. Like, you know, yeah. so. The yeah. idea that we have, that I have for everybody is, is that we should each be able to support each other. Like the way we're all here, mm -hmm. like this, we ain't got a, enough room for the rest of us, you know? <laughs> so from time to time, you might catch a whole different cast. Yeah, here, exactly. You know yeah. And like, I think that's dope too. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And plus we got people like, shout out Jake Salinas in the background, yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. uh, you know, he jumped in on uh, past Monday and he's looking to do some stuff too. So nice, bro. he might that's be awesome. on there tomorrow night, I believe, if he's down for it. Um but you know we've had a few faces like we had uh what's his name um the whisper gods oh shout out to felix my shout dude go felix. so man he's yeah. hitting me up actually he wants to come back on i'm I'm gonna reach out back to you i saw you in my inbox uh felix i got you man man yeah. so we've had people just kind of here and there you know um coming in and giving us their little it's good to, like you said to hear different people's oh yeah you know thoughts state and of minds and all kinds of shit our dog tone cardio said he got a donation for you he says hit him up in the inbox man he says hey, i got a it, he's like, i got corpus christi originals a donation for having rod and hot podcast on your podcast yes man. thank you tony appreciate, yeah, appreciate you man yes sir thank yeah, you yeah. shout out qb man qb is one of the yeah shout out qb too man appreciate you, you know who qb in. is no QB made a beat for 50 Cent a long time ago, and oh, wow. yeah, he made get him another there, one. Bro. He's good people, though. Really and around. he's got actually a catalog of different artists that he's What's done. Yeah, QB. QB, QB the problem. Matter of fact, QB, book your interview right now. 
Me and QB, we used to rap on karaoke machines in mm. high school. Oh, nice. Mm. <laughs> Am I lying, QB? You <laughs> <laughs> showing your age there, bro. Showing yeah. your age. <laughs> also, also, man, look, man, I just, I just, I just, I'm pushing my single out, man. Sound like it's hating, man. I just send it to all the radio stations over here. You know what I'm saying? I send it to all the DJs. I hit it. I, I, I send it to DJ Fame. I send it to Bobby Stump. I send it to everybody. Uh, John Bell. Everybody got it, man. You know what I'm saying? So y'all pay. Uh, we about to shoot the video here in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, so, really? Yeah, man, y'all be on the lookout for that, man. Yeah, what's up, man? Appreciate it. Uh, shoot, what was I gonna say? Oh, y'all have so y'all have something coming up. Y'all have the art walk, right? Smoke walk. Smoke walk. There you go. Yeah, which is like our version of the art walk, at run, running uh, concurrently with the art walk. Right on, man. We're at five two three Taylor Street, right across from the Corpus Christi College Times Building. Right on, and man. And this month we're gonna have performances. Last month we had like some uh, punk rock bands. This month we're gonna have some performances, some rap performances. We may have some food out there. Oh, we're gonna try to showcase some live art this this month too. Try to have some uh, different artists. Not uh, we're gonna probably have some live graffiti painting too. But we're gonna have, try to get some artists who like do art to come showcase their art mm -hmm. and maybe try to set it if they want to set it or just to come showcase it if they want to showcase it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out Alex Skates, man. He's been holding it down with that graffiti. He's been like on fast forward with that shit too because yeah. uh, he's everywhere. Like all you got to do is follow him and you'll see him tagging up everything everywhere in every city. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like for real. Hey, rest in peace. Well, you got to stop now, man. Alex. <laughs> 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 Rest in peace to his homie Tank, man. His homie Tank passed away, and he been, uh, you know, making sure he's not him. forgotten. Yeah, he making sure him. he's not forgotten at all, you know. So you got to make sure you keep track of them people, man. Them people that, that have been gone and passed away, you can't let them be forgotten, especially if you're the last one that remembers them. Make sure you tell the world, man. So for sure, for sure. Right on, man. Appreciate you guys coming on. Y'all have anything else y'all need to share? We y'all want to share? I was trying to find the We On Fire information. We might as well start cracking because this after this. Y'all y'all stay tuned. We got We On Fire weekend. We're just going to leave it at that. We got We On Fire weekend, the weekend of August, August 7th. We're going to have uh the actually the smoke walk will be on Friday. The basketball game will be on Saturday and the uh, giveaway will be on Sunday. So y'all Stay tuned for that. Once we find the flyer, we'll post it in the comments. Let me see. This is just packages. We're going to have different kind of packages. Yeah, so if you want to be a sponsor uh, for our actual uh, We On Fire game, our school supplies basketball game, we got a $300 package, we got a $200 package, and we got a $100 package and a $50 package. So we got packages for all budgets, and we'll post the flyer in the comments as soon as we go off. And yeah. this is, what is the, the We On Fire? That's the, we the, on, the, we the on, charity basketball yeah, game. Okay, we have okay. To so collect school supplies. We basically Ooh, use on. our we use our culture influence to bring school supplies in, so that way we can give it to the kids that need it. And every year we've grown like crazy each year and yeah. it's just us it's just me him and shout out big bell the kid uh there's been a few supporters that have been with us since the beginning but you know as far as the actual foundation of it me bell and king we holding it down and and awesome. we're on four we're yeah. on year four already so yeah, people who yeah. doubted us We've been mm -hmm. on the radio. We've been on the news every year. Yeah. Nice. Every year. We don't need, not one of us work at that. Well, Bell does now. But even before that, we were already getting that kind of publicity because uh, what we're doing, people understand. And there's not very many of us in our culture that are doing it like this. So mm -hmm. we invite anybody who is in our culture to come with us and collab to get this done. And, you know. Yeah, shout out to everybody. We on Fire 4, coming August. Yeah. 2, 2K4. Yeah, sponsors. 24. Any sponsors out there? Let's get it going. Appreciate you guys, man. For sure. Man, that's what's up. If nothing else, man, we'll say see you later. Yo. Already. Y'all make sure you follow oh, yeah, Rod Not follow Podcast, man. At Rod Not Podcast on all platforms. Coming to Spotify and uh, <laughs> Apple Podcasts <laughs> soon. Even though we already there, we'll have the updated yeah, episodes up there real soon, y'all. Episodes, man. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, podcast. Shout out to Corpus Christi Originals for having us yeah, once for again, sure, bro. Yes, sir. Appreciate right. you guys for joining. Stay tuned for the next uh, few uh, podcasts. We got some people lined up, uh, but yeah. Brighton High Podcast, go follow them, check them out. Appreciate you guys. Y'all have a good one. Peace.